from the two texts we read today, the Apostle Paul made some statements that we want to take note of. So we'll look at that. He says, when it comes to rejoicing, we should do it evermore. We should do it forever. In the study of the word evermore, it denotes not only should we be doing it forever, but we should be doing it with more fervency, more, more zeal, more energy, more enthusiasm. And it doesn't have to be physical. Because as you get older, you can't run around <laughs> like you would like to. But in your spirit, Amen. you ought to be running through a troop and leaping over a wall. Rejoice evermore. With respect to praying, he says, pray without ceasing. Meaning... Even when you're not in the posture of praying, you should be praying. Even when it's not convenient to pray, you should be praying. Even when you know not what you ought to be praying for, you should be praying. Nonstop. Around the clock. Not just in the sanctuary, but everywhere. When it comes to giving thanks, he said it should be always for all things and in everything. Rejoice. Evermore, pray without ceasing. In giving thanks, it should be always for all things and in everything. So thanksgiving is not just on the third Thursday in November. Help us on the mic, please. But Thanksgiving is always, it's continual. It is without end. Talk to me, somebody. It is perpetual. It is forever. It is nonstop. Oh, hallelujah. I, I'm going to say it again and see if you catch. I'm going to see the bright students. No. <laughs> Thanksgiving should be always continual, without end, perpetual, forever, nonstop. Some of you need to go back to kindergarten. Thanksgiving should be always continual, without end. Perpetual, forever, nonstop. You're waiting on the music, but Thanksgiving should be always continual, perpetual, without end, forever, nonstop. Look down your row and tell your neighbor you were just reacting to the music. Because if you were really giving thanks, you would be continual. You'll be doing it even now. It will be nonstop. It will be forever. It will be when the preacher was preaching or not preaching. It is until... The cows come on, whatever that means. 
it is until we turn blue in the face. Thanksgiving is until hell freezes over. I'm trying to get you to understand what the Apostle Paul was saying to us. When it comes to Thanksgiving, it's not a sporadic thing. It's a perpetual thing. And I and you need to embrace the message from the apostle. It's what we do. So I paused if they get the clock going. Oh, I'll preach all day. <laughs> they didn't start my time yet. This. <laughs> so I am being asked by the Holy Ghost to take a pause and to ask those that came in the house to give God thanks. You got 15 seconds to join in and give God the best thanks you can for all that he has done for you. Forgive me if I keep asking you throughout the service to take these Thanksgiving breaks because it is a perpetual thing. I can't have you sit for 45 minutes and not have you insert your thanks in the midst of the message. You may be seated. This perpetual, unending consistent, non-stop, without end thanksgiving requires us to be reflective and appreciative of God's help to us and the help that came to us from others. We have to be mindful that the Lord has been, the Lord is, and the Lord will be our help. To be thankful requires this type of awareness and an understanding that wherever we are in life, intend to be in life, we didn't get there on our own, and we won't get there on our own. Thanksgiving, therefore, demands that we confess we were helped. We are being helped, and we will be helped. Thanksgiving requires a testimony. I am blessed. I'm being blessed, and I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. And when... When you are reflective and appreciative and aware, your, your thanksgiving is not pumped. It's prompted by your reflection, appreciation, and awareness. <laughs> so, so, so there are folks in the house that you don't need any cheerleader to make them thank God. Like you saw earlier, all they have to do is just think. And, it, and they go up with a shout. Their hands go up. Their feet go dancing. Their heart starts leaping. A smile comes over and they get happy just thinking. But there are others, you need the prompters. You, you, you mean the pumpers. You need some to come up and say, who woke you up this morning? You need to be reminded that God woke you up. Who, who, who helped you get dressed this morning? <laughs> who kept the, 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 the car behind you from running into your back? You have to be pumped to get out to yourself. And, and, and you're being oblivious 
that there's a hand that's guiding your life and there's a God that's in charge. But I know there are some folks up in here when we open our eyes and we could see, thank you. When, when we started to get dressed and we could discern between red, um, blue and black, we said thank you. When we fried our eggs and it didn't burn and, or burn down the house, we said thank you. When we swallowed the egg and, and it went down without us choking, there was a thank you. In fact, before we even started eating the eggs, we said thank you. Oh, can I? No, no, no. That, that, that. But there are some folks who went in the refrigerator and took out the egg. We said thank you. Oh, okay. Some folks, by the time we approached the refrigerator, we said thank you. Just walking down the stairs and not falling and breaking our st- we said I need those that are like that to get up on your knees get up on your feet rather and tell God thank you open up your mouth and say thank you Woo, you can't you can prime me for a thanks I just need to think about God and a thanks come up out of my mouth Look down your row and tell you, excuse me, but I feel a thank you shout. Don't get frightened now. There is a shout in my belly that wants to tell God, thank you. The fact that I even have a voice, I want to say thank you. You may be seated. I was in a conference years ago. And there was a lady, a big auditorium, just keep running around the stadium like she was crazy. I thought she was crazy too. Non-stop, no matter what they did, no matter what they were saying, she just kept running and screaming the whole service. When it was quiet, she was on top of her lungs, screaming and running like a crazy woman. Finally, we heard her testimony. She was in Russia, locked up in prison, and she got out free. You just, you can act cute if you want to, but I was locked up. They threw away the keys. They forgot about me, but he set me free. And I can't help but open up my mouth and tell God, thank you. If I'm I'm disturbing you, it's because you don't understand what God did for me. Every crazy person in the house that God's been good to, can you help me tell God thank you? You, you may be seated. I want to share with you from the text three things that the Apostle Paul, in my view, wants us to understand. Number one, our thanksgiving should be expansive, meaning broad. The scope should be far-reaching. It should not be limited. It should not be in boundaries. It should be wide. Say hallelujah. Extensive. In everything, give thanks. Giving thanks always for all things. I'm going to make this real short. You've got to Understand when it comes to giving God thanks, it's not just for a few things. (laughs) It is for all things. 
let me, let me, I feel like walking a little bit today, but I'm going to try and behave myself. Last week, I, I, I was sweating all over. I'm not doing that today <laughs> because it's Thanksgiving. I just got to make you start thinking. Thanksgiving should be expensive, meaning when you begin to give God thanks, it should not just be limited in scope. It should be about all things. This is the reason why you can do it always. Because there's so many things for you to give God thanks for. Look down at your feet. If you got shoe on. Put your hands on your head. If you got hair on. <laughs> Bought or <are> real. <laughs> Don't sit cute on me. It's if you got a head for the Smith and no here on <laughs> from your head, you got reason to give God thanks. I'm, I'm pumping now because you are not prompted. Look at your fingers if you got five. And if you got six, you got to give him extra thanks. Oh God, because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you got eyes that you can see and you got nose that you can smell and you, you got ears that you can hear, you ought to, you got brain that you can, you ought to give God thanks for all things. If you are single, you ought to give God praise. If you're married, you ought to give God praise. If you got children, you got to give God praise. If you have no children, give God praise. If you got bills, give God praise. If you have no bills, give God praise. If you got a job, if you got no in everything, for all things, come on up in here and give God praise. If you drove a car, if you walked oh come on and help me thank God for everything for all things in everything stand on your feet and the fact that you can stand up let your feet tell God thank you hallelujah The apostle is not going to make us become so narrow in our thinking that all we thank God for is for our daily food. For all things, give him thanks. Church, are you hearing me? For all things, Give him thanks. Hallelujah to God. You know, I, I hear the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm going off script. You remember that widow whose husband died? I'm trying to see if we need Sunday school. And she came to the man of God. And said, your servant is dead and the creditors have come. <laughs> and, the, and, and the man of God, she said, you know, she's in debt and they're about to take her two sons and sell them, put them in prison to pay the debt. <laughs> oh, God. I want to ask pause a minute, I'm moving with, with that thought, and I'm following the Holy Spirit. Can you, if you've been serving God, or somebody in your family been serving God, and you didn't get what you thought you should get, it's no time for you to become despondent. But even in that, you should give thanks. 
Everybody in the house that believes that God has not done you right yet. <laughs> I want you to take a pause and help me give God praise. He didn't do it the way you wanted him to do it. You didn't do it. He didn't do it how you think he should do it. Don't complain. Give him thanks. <laughs> give him thanks. He didn't come when you want him to. He didn't do it the way you wanted him to. Don't let the devil cause you to gripe and complain and murmur. In fact, turn it around and say, Lord, I thank you. I don't understand it, but I thank you. I don't know how it's going to end, but I thank you. Come on and give God thanks. And you are not dead it means God has not forgotten you move on okay Lord so so he said to her what do you have in the house he was trying to shift her mind that you are not hopeless you are not destitute it's not over yet but if you can identify what you have, then you can begin to reverse what you thought is going to be your destiny. If you can begin to appreciate that you got something in your life still, grab a hold of that. Open up your mouth and tell God thank you when he sees that you can identify something the work of the reversal of the curse just began if you got something in your life anything stand on your feet and give god praise it might just be a little oil but if you got anything this is the time to give him Thanksgiving opens up your spirit for God to begin to work in you. <laughs> and Thanksgiving opens up your spirit to allow others to give in to you. I'm, I'm totally off script. Come on in. When she identified that she just had a little oil, she could go borrow from her neighbors. Who, who gives, who lends to anybody that's broke? But because she could identify that she had something, somebody else was able to buy into what she had. I'm trying to tell you, I'm giving you 10 seconds to identify something in your life and get up on your feet and start praising God. I guarantee you there are people around getting ready to help you to reverse your situation, but it starts with you. Your number one or thanksgiving is for all things and in everything. <laughs> all things meaning whatever you have. In everything means whatever you are in. Everybody that's in something, I'm not talking partner now, or sister. <laughs> Everybody that's in something, Paul is saying, give God thanks. If you're in something that's good, give God thanks because you acknowledge that God is the one that brought you into a goodly place. If you're in something that's bad, give God.
God praise because you're acknowledging that he's the one that can bring you out. He orders your steps and he directs your ways. You might be in Egypt, but give God praise because the God that brought you in Egypt is the God that, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And when he brings you out, he's not bringing you out broke. He's not bringing you out weak. He's bringing you out with everything that is owed to you. Come on, somebody help me give God praise in whatever you are in right now. If you are in debt, give him praise. If you are in praise, in pain, give him thanks. If you are in fear, give him thanks. Because that God that you give God thanks to is the God that will bring you out. Paul and Silas were in prison, but they refused to be silent. So they prayed and praised, another word for thanksgiving, and God moved in. When you give God thanks, you invite him in. This morning early, I was going over my notes and I, I, I came up with this. Make your situation into an, an event. <laughs> Whatever you're in, declare it an event for Thanksgiving. Rename your situation Thanksgiving. <laughs> Woo! And open up your mouth. <laughs> And start giving God thanks. And then because you're having a Thanksgiving event. Start sending out invitations. And the first person you ought to invite. His name is. And you should know he inhabits the praise of his people. In other words, when you invite him to your event, he will come and not leave until he makes the crooked path straight. Until he turns things around. He will make your water into wine. Turn your mourning into dancing. Take your spirit of heaviness and give Give you the garment of praise. Anybody in something right now? Make it an event. Send Jesus an invitation. Come on, Lord. Over here, King Jesus. You are invited. Welcome into my situation. And when you come, come with your strong arm. Come with your healing virtues. Come with your transforming power. In the name of Jesus, somebody invite the Lord into your event. You don't need the banker like you need Jesus. You don't need a psychiatrist like you need Jesus. You don't need your friend like you need Jesus because he's a friend. He's a doctor that can remedy all of your situation. Somebody help me invite Jesus in this house. Welcome in my situation. Welcome into my problem. Welcome into my fiery furnace. Welcome into my lion's den. Welcome. Move your hands up and down your row and say, welcome, welcome. Let your thanksgiving be expansive. Thank him for all things and thank him in everything. Do I have any believers now? Have I made any converts? Have I changed anybody's attitude and mind? Woo! I 
I don't know what the devil is going to do with you when you get home. Because I see you running up and down your house, laying your hands on all of your stuff, saying thank you. Woo, thank you. I see you running up and down your closet, laying hands on all of your shoes and all of your dresses and saying thank you. I see you going back on the job that you didn't want to go to last week. I see you there early tomorrow morning with a thank you up in your mouth. Say yeah, because now you understand that your thanksgiving changes not your situation, it changes you. Say yeah. Everything around you begins to change. They don't know what they're going to do with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next time you go to the supermarket, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody. And, 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 and you lay out your stuff, and when the cashier is finished, you don't have enough money to pay for it. You are not going to feel embarrassed to put back a few stuff. In fact, you're going to say, hold up here. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to run back to the aisle, put back your stuff, and say, thank you, Jesus. You're not going to help. Who am I talking to? Who went to the supermarket the last time and you had to put back some stuff? Can you stand? Don't make the prophet a liar. Now, can you open your mouth and say, thank you. I put it back. But the next time, I won't have to pay for it. Thank you for the blessings of life and for the burdens of life. You don't like that, do you? Thank you for the blessings of life and for the burdens of life. Let your thanksgiving be expanded. Blessings and burdens. Blessing makes you praise. Burdens make you pray. What is hell going to do with a praise and praying saint what guards can keep you locked up what chains can keep you bound when you are praising praise so I'm thanking God for the blessing and I'm thanking God for the burdens and when they combine it becomes a power force it's the negative and the positive that gives you power. Can I help somebody praise God? Because you've got power now. Say it. The blessings and the burdens. If you connect them with thanksgiving, you got power. Let me count the powerful saints in the house. One, two, three. I hear the Lord say, if you can find ten, you want six. Come on, lift up your hands and give God praise for the blessings and the burdens. They make you pray and they make you pray. Be expansive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Six seconds. Hallelujah. Number two. The, the apostle Paul in the text is saying not only should our thanksgiving be expansive, but it should be expressed. In everything, give. Thanksgiving. 
giving requires expression. I'm going now to the quiet saints. Let the quietness, holy quietness. It don't work with Thanksgiving. Giving thanks, I wrote here in my notes, begins with the heart and comes out of the mouth. If it begins with your heart, it will come out of your mouth because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is 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 growing up in your heart, <laughs> it's going to come out of your mouth. I don't have time to go into that. Oh. You might keep it in for a while. But one day, it's going to come out. I told him my story. Years ago, I was counseling somebody. Week after week, and I was getting disgusted. And I was so fed up. Because I felt like I was wasting my time, LJM. And I'm looking at this person and saying, what on God's earth? In my head. (laughs) And before you know it, I was still in the person. All that I was thinking. They look at me like, where? And then I try to. <laughs> but because honestly, my heart was sincere, I, I use it to expand my conversation and tell the person, really, if you, if you look at yourself, you'll see things that can change. And the person did do it. But I'm telling the truth. If you like me, it's gonna, and, 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 and it's in your heart, it's gonna come out. If you don't like me, it's gonna come out. I feel like a prophet right now. <laughs> Give me some oil. <laughs> out of the abundance of the heart. If he never tells you he loves you, love is not in his heart. My God. Woo! I'm I, I'm trying not to deviate. I, I'm trying to be a good. But when you get quiet like that, you make me want to preach. And teach. Thanksgiving is an expression from the heart that words come out motivated from what's in the heart. Are you with me? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. <laughs> can I can I can I can I make a detour? Remember we said it must be expansive in your thanksgiving. Your expressions of thanks should not only be also to people that like you. Amen. All right, all right, I got to make a believer. I, I see some doubters. Read Luke chapter 6, 35. But love ye your enemies. Do good. When I was preparing this, I said, let me just say something. 
because of what I just read, folks are going to come to borrow from you. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but before you, I'm not saying not to lend, but before you lend, check with Elder Allen. Everybody say, check with, check with Elder Allen. Say it loud. The bishop says you can lend. But before you lend, check with Elder Allen. Okay. All right. Just had to say that. Lend. All right. This is going to help you now. You, you won't have to check after this. Hoping for nothing again. Thank you, Come on. When you lend, don't go knocking on their doors at 5 o'clock in the morning asking back for your money. If you lend, it should be with the intention. So don't lend if you can't do like they said, set it and forget it. <laughs> lend it and forget it. Pastor, years ago, the Lord disturbed my peace and made me do a lesson in the church about forgiving debts and freeing the saints that were all borrowed up because the Bible says the, 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 lend, the borrower is servant to the lender and we're all in bondage. And I got up boldness teaching everybody to forget the debts. We lost so many members. <laughs> Words came back. He can't forgive it, but we not forgive it. They want my money back. <laughs> and so they left. We wrote off monies and forgot about it, but look at us. <laughs> Please come back, Arrington. And your reward shall be great. If you lend, if you love, and don't expect anything back. Your reward shall be great, and you shall be children of the highest. Watch this now. For he is kind unto the unthankful and evil. Let your expressions of thanksgiving and appreciation of love be not only to people that are good to you. If you do like the publicans do, what reward have you? God is looking for people that are like him, that he can reward them with greatness, with blessings untold. If you behave like him. Survey number one, I'm only doing three today. How many folks in the house today, God has been kind to you when you know he should not have been. Would you stand? You that are standing, how many of us he has been kind to when he should not have been and we were not thankful for the kindness? Would you remain seated if you, that you fall in that category? You were not thankful. You, you got the kindness of God, but you forgot to give him thanks. Amen. Thank you. If people never tell you thank you, you should not stop your expressions of thanks and kindness towards them. Be godlike in that behavior. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. This message is timely because we are in the last days. And one of the prophecies of the last days is that people will be unthankful. They will not say thank you. 
But the Lord is warning us not to expect it. Still be kind to people, even if they are unthankful. Hallelujah. And if they are unthankful, you need to remind yourself that God will not forget your labor of love. But he will be kind to you. And your reward is for God. I need 50 folks that will not stop being kind to people even though they are unthankful. Wave your hands. I need you to understand in a church this size, there are ungrateful people. But it takes the negative and the positive to get power. Say amen. This is a powerful church. Because we got negatives and positives, but we learn how to do life together until God transforms us into his image and into his likeness. Clap your hands and give God praise. My time is running out. He, ten lepers came for healing. He told them, go show yourself to the priests. As they were going, they got cleansed. Nine went on their way. One returned and said thank you. This is a generation that will not express thanks. And the warning is, it's, it's not the thing that you should do. You should be conscious of what God is doing in your life, what people have done for you, and open your mouth and say thank you. Come on, say thank you. Don't be so proud. Don't be so arrogant that you can't say thank you. Look down your row and say, tell the person, thank you for sitting beside me. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for not stepping on my toes. <laughs> the expression of thanks has physical benefits to you. I'll just say three and my time is going. Number one, it makes you sleep better. I tried it last night. Before I went to bed, I said, here's Siri, play some soft music. Siri put music on. I lie down and I kept saying, thank you for the comforter. Thank you for the bed. Thank you that my children are not calling me and they're not somewhere, wherever they are, they seem to be safe. If they were not safe, they would be calling Thank you that none of the saints are calling me. Nobody's calling to go to the hospital. Say hallelujah. I, I went to a, a tirade. I thank you. And before you know it, I was fast asleep. And I never got up to 645. Normally, I'm up by five. So I'm telling you, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, they are right. Being thankful will help you sleep. Number two, being thankful will help to build your self-esteem. Ooh, hallelujah. When you are thankful, you attract other folks around you that are thankful as well. Grateful, being grateful, being thankful creates a positiveness about you. It changes your posture, your awareness, you, and people begin to like you because you have a spirit of thankfulness. You don't mind telling them thank you. And so you start to feel good about yourself. Say hallelujah. Anybody in the house want to feel better about yourself? Start being thankful. 
I wish I had time. I'll send you my notes. Number three, it will help your mental health. <laughs> it produces the, the happy hormones. <laughs> you generate something in your body that makes you feel high. <laughs> if you are on drugs, and you need something else, you need a little alcohol, you need some weed to give you a boost. I'm suggesting that you shift and start telling God, thank you. It's more lasting and less side effects. I wish I had a church that will, I, I didn't make it up. You can Google it and ask and Google it when you go home and, and ask Google to tell you what are the benefits of being thankful. That's what I did. And you'll find out this thing works. So I need to make my second survey. Anybody here having trouble sleeping? Anybody here have trouble with your self-esteem? Anybody here have mental issues? I need you just to tell God from this day on, I'm going to thank you for all things and thank you in everything. I'm going to open my mouth and not just think it. I'm going to say it. Thank you for being my prayer partner. Thank you for being my co-worker. Thank you for being my employer thank you for my paycheck thank you for taking care of the grounds thank you mr gardener for sweeping up the leaves everything i see is going to be an expression of thank you when was the last time you told your barber thank you for cutting your hair when was the last time you told your hairdresser thank you for reserving my special weave <laughs> you'll be surprised when the ladies go crazy when they can't get the hair that they need <laughs> especially in the, in the holiday season when it run out why are you all looking so wave your hands Express your thanks. Tell people thank you. Number three, I'm through. Our thanksgiving is expected. Our thanksgiving must be expansive. It must be expressed. And it is expected. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. It is God's will, God's expectation, God's desire, God's command that we be thankful. Now, how many surveys did I do? Two, the third one I'm through. How many parents here had to teach your children to be thankful? Stand, please, stand. I thought as much. Thank you. Children, sit, please, thank you, have to be taught to say thank you. By they come out ungrateful, <laughs> not even aware. They're unaware. They want the bottle, and when they get it, they cry until they get it. And when they get it and finish it, just When we are thankful as God's children, he expects us, whatever we receive, to say thank you. Say it's expected. Stop being so immature. 
Lack of thankfulness is an expression of your immaturity. And like all the parents who stood, God now have to teach you how to say thank you. Oh, I wish I had time. Because I remember teaching my children how to say thank you. Sometimes you have to hold back stuff from them until they say, LJ, it's time to praise God. How many folks can say you believe things are being held back from you? I just gave you the way to get it released. It's a sign you're growing when you start giving thanks. It's a sign that you're learning how to give. And number three, when you start giving thanks, it calls you to have a glow. You're glowing. God loves a cheerful giver. He expects these things from you. Slap yourself on your left knee and say, God expects me to say thank you. Let me, let me, let me close with this. For this is the will of God concerning you. Whenever you are thankful, you unlock into your lives some of the things that God has for you. Number one, Mark 3. For whoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister. And my brother. Being thankful is the will of God. And whoever does the will of God will discover they are a relative to Almighty God. When you are thankful, you, you bring an awareness to yourself that you are related to God. And if, you, if, if that ever gets a hold of you, that you share the same DNA with God. You share the same makeup as God. You are connected to God. It changes your life forever. So when I'm telling you to say thanks because it's the will of God, he's saying to you also that will make you understand who you are. Oh, I'm not a child of the devil. I'm not who they say I am. I'm a king to almighty God. I'm a here with Christ and a joint here with Christ. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I need somebody in the house to open up your mouth and say thank you with the understanding you're saying I'm related to God and I'm connected to God I come out of God and God is connected to me and he will take good care of his own open your mouth and say thank you and this time if you're a brother you ought to give God praise open your mouth and say thank you and if you are a sister you ought to give God praise. If you're a son or a daughter, say thank you. Ooh. It's not just saying it. When you do it, you invoke the will of God. Sit for a minute. Let me just give you two more. And then I'm through. Let's jump to 1 John 2, 17. Talking about being thankful, being the will of God. First John 2, 17 says, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Watch it now. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The world passeth away. 
everything is going to go down but the will of God is that we be thankful and if we are thankful the Bible says we will abide forever I don't care about the war in Israel or the war in in Russia or, or, or you wherever Ukraine nothing is going to take me out I'm going to stay around here until God decides to sound the trumpet how am I going to abide just by every day saying thank you for all things thank you in everything not just think it but say it he expects me to hang around so the devil can know this child you can take out this one you can not wipe out this one is gonna stand still until he sees the salvation of the Lord his God how is that happening just by you saying thank you if you feel the winds of adversary the winds blowing against you and all hell is against you and you're rocking to and fro I want you to open up your mouth and say thank you and I decree and declare that you are now standing on solid ground stand up my saint stand up child of God and tell the sickness not until God says tell the doubt not until God says whatever you're in if you give thanks you will abide forever say yeah say yeah some will come and some will go but we that are thankful will be planted in the house of the Lord lift up your hands lift up your heads open your mouth and shout thank you it is the will shall know of the doctrine. Revelation, Sister Neil, comes to you by you just saying thank you. If you do the will of God, you know his doctrine. You know his ways. You know his precepts. You know his laws. It has opened your spirit for divine revelation. Oh God, some things you want to be taught, but some things comes from revelation. And revelation comes from a thankful heart. Amen. Hallelujah, God. John 9, 31. And we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth it is the will of God that you be thankful. If you are thankful, God is going to hear your prayers. Are you hearing me? So much is tied up in this Thanksgiving concept. And if you get it, I guarantee you, your life will not be the same. I need a, a child of God that will join in and say, I am going to live my life and the rest of my days being expensive about my praise. Everything I can see, I will thank God for. Everything that I can hear, I will thank God for. Everything that I can smell, I will thank God for. Everything I can touch, I will thank God for. I need somebody to walk 
through your mind and think about the blessings of God and the burdens of your life and still open your mouth and be expressive and tell God thanks. Oh, make a commitment on this Thanksgiving Sunday. You can count on me being thankful to Almighty God. He expects me to say thank you and I'll be that son I'll be that daughter I'll be that saint that will not hold back my praise and my thanks to almighty God oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever I need somebody that agrees that God is good and he's good all the time to stand on your feet and join in with David and give thanks unto the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gather them out of the lands from the east, from the north, from the south, wherever you came from. Give God praise that he brought you to this place at this time to give him thanks. Say yeah. Who oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he's good for his mercy endureth forever. Who oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endureth forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone done great wonders for his mercy endureth forever. Can praise and thanksgiving is continual. I'm through. Lift up your hands, open your mouth, and give God praise to the God who redeemed you from your enemy. To the God who gave food to you. To the God who gave sleep to you, who blessed you and kept you. Wave your hands and say thank you. Everybody on your feet, please. Slap yourself on the left knee and on your right. Let's try it again. I worked so hard. Can you believe it? Slap yourself on your left knee. Number one, your brain connected yes. to comprehend what I was saying. Yes. You were able to do it. Yes. You knew your left yes. from the right. Yes. You were able to stand. Yes. And you want me to say, Hallelujah. say thank you. Let me try it again. Everybody, everybody on your feet. Slap yourself on your left knee, then on your right knee. Put your hands on your head. You want to be pumped. I'm trying to see if you can be prompted. Put your hands on your head. You understood what I said. You could do what I said. Give him thanks. Put your hand on your back. You're looking at me. Open your mouth and give God praise for understanding. Put your hand on your belly. Take your right hand, place it on your right shoulder. Thank you. 
Glory to God. I won't say much, but in my lifetime, in my experience, I've seen physical therapists come and tell folks to do what you were told to do. And they could not make the connection. Oh, and they wish they could. And so I'm going to say it one more time. Take your right hand, place it on your right shoulder. I'm not going to pump you. But if you understood what you just did and who helped you, open your mouth and say thank you. In everything, in all things, open your mouth. God expects you to say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need a hundred folks to take ten more seconds and tell God before I go home in the sanctuary with the saints I want to say thank you for allowing me to be in your house to hear your word and to say thank you Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, excuse me for a minute. I just can't go home without telling God. Thank you for the carpet. Thank you for the chair. Thank you I could read. Thank you I could see. Thank you I could hear. And I got a heart ha, that wants to say thank you. Ha, say yeah. You got 30 seconds. So you got 30 seconds. Put it on the board. 30 seconds. Ha, to open your mouth ha, and express thank you to Almighty God. Ha, are you ready? One, two, three. Thanksgiving become more, especially in America, become more associated with. When people think of Thanksgiving, what do they think of? Pretend this is family food, food, right? And it's a question. When you think of Thanksgiving, what do you think of? You may be seated. I'm going to 
many watch Family Feud? Right? And Steve Harvey today. <laughs> All those who say free will be scared. You may be seated. Those who have another answer, shut it out. Family! Fa stand. Go to say family stand. Don't say Black Friday, say stand. All right. Don't say turkey stand. All right. So let's take, let's stop it because the time is up. So food, family, and turkey. You see how hard my job is? My job. Some of the family you see, you won't see them until next year. And to be honest, some of you wish you didn't. You just tolerated them. And truth is, how many of you really ate the turkey? It looked pretty. But how many of you really ate it? And most of it's going to be thrown away. My job is to make you think of God. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Lord, we thank you for everything that we have comes from you. The food we eat you give food to all flesh. The families we have all came because of you who gave life. The turkeys we cook came out of your creation. It's about you. So I ask today that you allow us to be expansive in our thinking, in our scope of how we give thanks and to whom we give thanks to. When we think about it and become aware of it, help us to open our mouth and tell you thanks. You expect it. And when you see it done, you connect us with so many of your promises just for having a thankful heart. Thank you for the patience of the saints today. Thank you for allowing them the tolerance to sit and to listen to what you have us to say. The letter kills, the spirit gives life. Give life to this Thanksgiving sermon today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are thankful you heard the word of the Lord today, would you stand? Clap your hands and tell him thanks. If you enjoyed the service, spread the word and join us next week.